Hi guys, welcome to another video on this video tutorial on mining data from the social media with Python. And still on the introductory videos, we are going to talk about the challenges. Some of the challenges of social media mining are inherited from the broader field of data mining. When dealing with social data, we're often dealing with big data. To understand the meaning of big data and the challenges it entails, we can go back to the traditional definition, uh, which is from a, a paper uh, from 2001, which is called 3D Data Management, Controlling Data Volume, Velocity and Variety by Doug Laney. And that is also known as the three V's of big data, volume, variety, and velocity. Over the years, this definition has also been expanded by adding more V's, most notably value, as providing value to an organization is one, is one the main purpose of exploiting big data. Regarding the original three Vs, volume means dealing with data that spans over more than one machine. This, of course, requires a different infrastructure from small data processing, for example, in memory. Moreover, volume is also associated with velocity in the sense that data is growing so fast that the concept of big becomes a moving target. Finally, variety concerns how data is present in different formats and structures, often incompatible between them and with different semantics. Data from social media can check all the three Vs. The rise of big data has pushed the development of new approaches to database technologies towards the family of systems called NoSQL. The term is an umbrella for multiple database paradigms that share the common trait of moving away from traditional relational data, promoting dynamics schema design. While this video tutorials series is not about database technologies from this field, we can still appreciate the need for dealing with the mixture of well-structured, unstructured, and semi-structured data. The phrase structured data refers to information that is well organi organized and typically presented in a tabular form. And for this reason, the connection with relational database is immediate. And uh, the table that is on, that you can see on the screen uh, shows an example of structured data that represents books sold by a bookshop. It's a very simple uh, example. This kind of data is structured as each represented item has a precise organization, specifically three attributes called title, genre, and price. The opposite of Structured data is unstructured data, which is information without a predefined data model, or simply not organized according to a predefined data model. Unstructured data is typically in the form of textual, <coughs> textual data. For example, emails, documents, social media posts, and so on. Techniques presented throughout this book can be used to extract patterns in unstructured data to provide some structure. Between structured and unstructured data, we can find semi-structured data. In this case, the structured structure is either flexible or not fully predefined. It is sometimes also referred to as a self-describing structure. A typical example of data format is a semi-structured that is semi-structured is JSON. As the name suggests, JSON borrows its notation from the programming language JavaScript. 
this data format has become extremely popular due to its wide use as a way to exchange data between client and server in a web application. And the snippet that you see on the screen is an example of JSON representation that extends the table that we, that's uh, the previous table about the book data. And uh, what we can observe from this example is that the first book has the author attribute, whereas this attribute is not present in the second book. Moreover, the genre attribute is here presented as a list with a variable number of values. Both these aspects are usually avoided in a well-structured or relational data format, but are perfectly fine in JSON and in more in general when dealing with, with semi-structured data. The discussion on structured and unstructured data translates into handling if different data formats and approaching data integrity in different ways. The phrase data integrity is used to capture the combination of challenges in coming from the presence of dirty, inconsistent or incomplete data. The case of inconsistent and incomplete data is very common when analyzing user-generated content and it calls for attention, especially with data from social media. It is very rare to observe users who share their data meth meth uh, method methodically, almost in a formal fashion. On the contrary, social media often consists of informal environments with some contradictions. For example, if a user wants to complain about a product on the company's Facebook page, the user first needs to like the page itself, which is quite the opposite of being upset with a company due to the poor quality of their product. Understanding how users interact on social media platform platforms is crucial to design a good analysis. Developing data mining applications also requires us to consider issues related to data access particularly when company policies translate into the lack of data to analyze. In other words, data is not always openly available. So the previous, uh, I just mentioned a uh, discussion how in social media mining, it, this is a little less of an issue compared to other corporate environments as most social media platforms offer well-engineered language agnostic APIs that allow us to access the data we need. The availability of such data is of course still dependent on how users share their data and how they grant us access. For example, Facebook users can decide the level of detail that can be shown in their pro public pro profile and the details that can be shown only to their friends. Profile information such as birthday, current location, and work history, as well, as well as many more, can be individually flagged as private or public. Similarly, when we try to access such data through the Facebook API, the users who sign up to our application have the opportunity to, to grant us access only to a limited subset of the data we are asking for. And one last general challenge of data mining lies in understanding the data mining process itself and being able to explain it. In other words, coming up with the right question before we start analyzing the data is not always straightforward. More often than not, research and development processes are driven by expl exploratory analysis in the sense that in order to understand how to tackle the problem, we first need to start tampering with it. A related concept in statistics is described by the phrase correlation does not imply causation. Many statistical tests can be used to establish correl correlation between two variables, that is two events occurring together. 
but this is not sufficient to establish a cause effect relationship in either direction. Funny example of bizarre correlations can be found all over the web. A popular case was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, one of the most reputable medical jur journals, showing an interesting correlation between the amount of chocolate consumed per capita per country versus the number of Nobel Prizes awarded. And this um, journal was called, uh, this case was called Chocolate Consumption, Cognitive Function and Nobel Laureates by Franz H. Messerly in 2012. So when performing an exploratory analysis, it is important to keep in mind that correlation, again, which means two events occurring together, is a bidirectional relationship, while causation, which means event A has caused event B, is an undirectional one. Does chocolate make you smarter, or do smart people like chocolate more than an average person? Do the two events occur together just by a random chance? Is there a third yet unseen variable that plays some role in correlation? Simply observing a correlation is not sufficient to describe causality, but it is often an interesting starting point to ask important questions about the data we are observing. So that's it for this uh, challenges part. And in the next section, we're going to look at generalization, the way generalization of the way our application interacts with the social media API and performs the desired analysis. So I'll see you in the next video.